What is good, y'all? Mikey T, the movie star, back with some breaking news. That's right, the Louis Vuitton fashion show in Paris. And Pusha T sent a diss back at Jim Jones. That is crazy, you guys. Jim Jones had said some things about Pusha T we're going to get into on the show today, about him not being on the top 50 list, but a little bit more than that. He took a few more shots at him than just saying he wasn't on the top 50 list. He took a shot about his street past, his history, and his ties to the street. So he, d he dug a little bit deeper, which made people not only question why Jim Jones was calling out their music integrity, but why is he going after their ties in the streets as well? Is it a personal thing? We all know Dipset was kind of known as being those street authentic cats. So we're going to explore all of that today in this episode, but I want everybody watching to hit that like button. I'm Mikey T, the movie star. I want y'all to follow me on social media. All you got to do is go to the description in this video, click on the name, shoot me a comment or a message, and I'm going to follow you back based on this video. Appreciate everybody tuning in. So Jim Jones shockingly dissed Pusha T. You know what I mean? Shockingly dissed him when he said, what has he done that puts him in the greatest rappers of all time? Besides talk about Coke that he probably didn't get himself. He didn't get it himself? Like, come on, man. This is one thing that people aren't really too concerned with this day and age anymore. Maybe back in the day. When people were listening to music and they were like, oh, yo, this is the street authentic rapper. I'm wondering what he's... If a rapper has made it in the music industry, they don't need to go out there and risk their life by doing things that are going to get them locked up for felonies any longer. If a musician is selling music in the stores, he doesn't need to risk his life traveling from VA and bringing some shit upstate. You know what I mean? Like... They don't need to move like that anymore if they're selling records. Now we have other artists, uh, even artists from New York, who have gone on to say that they report on what they watch through their window. The street life that they saw take place in front of them is what they rap about. So a lot of this street authentic rap, you know, as much as we all wish the fans, as we all wish that it was true, a lot of it's not true. And furthermore, if it was true, when an artist makes it to another point of his career, they're supposed to leave that behind. But yeah, so Jim Jones throwing that in there at the end about it being, uh, about him talking, uh, what has he done besides talk about coke? Like that kind of shows me that Jim Jones is kind of feeling like Dipset is the street authentic group or a more street authentic group than Clips. That's where I'm taking that. But when Jim Jones says, what has he done that puts him in the greatest rappers of all time? Now, what has he done? He was a part of one of the most uh, recognized duos in hip hop, Clips, a group that actually did a lot on the independent circuit before linking with Pharrell. So he's done that. He also went on to become a solo artist, whereas, you know what I mean? He kind of took the same route as Prodigy from Mob Deep, you know what I mean? And Pusha T became a very successful solo artist to the point where people were really uh, pushing him to release Daytona and King Push. He had also become the president of Good Music. He stepped down from that. So, Jim Jones... Uh, Pusha T uh, has done quite a bit in the music industry to be considered for this top 50 list. Now, that's not taking anything away from what Jim Jones has done. Jim Jones came up from a rap group. Dipset came up from being a hype man. You never thought he would have made it, but look what he did. He went out and made the most successful club record. The guy who you just thought was going to be the hype man came out with the most successful club record that you couldn't deny. I'm talking about Ballin. He did so many units on an independent that he made the independent major. So I'm not going to take anything away from what Jim Jones has done, and I'm certainly not going to take anything away from what Pusha T has done, but I'm just going to give you all an idea of what they both have done. And you all can make your own decisions. Drop it in the comment. Who do you think would be higher on the top 50 list? Who do you think should be higher? 
You know, so when Jim Jones says, what has he done? I'm going to answer that. So both of them have very interesting careers in the industry. Jones said he's nice as shit. He could wrap his ass off. But what has he done? He said nobody has dressed like him. Nobody wants to be like Pusha T. Jim Jones said, I don't remember nothing. Well, let me address that. Let me address that. Nobody wanted to be like Pusha T. Nobody wanted to dress like Pusha T. Nobody wanted to act like Pusha T. I think one of the biggest artists of our generation wanted to dress and act like Pusha T. Wanted to get into the skateboarding of Skateboard P. Do y'all know who I'm talking about? I'm talking about an artist that Dipset welcomed with open arms. I'm talking about Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne and Pusha T. Do they not seem a little bit similar? Huh? Did Lil Wayne, after he got rid of his thug image, not start skateboarding? Like, let's be real about this. I mean, sometimes some people are so fascinated with somebody that they just lose sight of what really is. Yes, Cash Money, Birdman, all them, they looked at what Pusha T and Clips were doing. They graphed a little bit of what they were from their image, as all artists do. All artists do. I mean, for crying out loud, 50 Cent made on his albums a song for every genre of mu you know every genre within the hip hop music frame a song for the ladies a song for the gangsters a song for the clubs a mellow street gangster song an anthem every style of music you can make on the album that's what you're going to target so anybody are saying that Pusha T didn't inspire different stuff like that Pusha T, in my opinion, inspired Lil Wayne. So to say that he didn't inspire nobody, he inspired the person that inspired the whole generation. Drake, Young Thug, all of these guys give praise to Lil Wayne. And uh, a feud, a hip-hop feud that shouldn't even have happened with Pusha T and Lil Wayne and Drake and all them. But this is what Pusha T does, you guys. He takes situations and he actually exposes them. So I don't know. I think Jim Jones was kind of barking up the wrong tree when he went and said this about Pusha T. He said, uh, he said, I don't know too many dudes in the game that was leaning towards being like Pusha T. That's very funny because... Jim Jones was actually working with Lil Wayne. I believe they were shooting a video. Uh, I forget what the song was called, but I think it was at a strip club. And they were shooting a video, and it's like, come on, man. You're working with Lil Wayne late in your career. And they worked with Lil Wayne very early in their career as well. When Joel Santana and all them and Lil Wayne embraced all. Lil Wayne even had records with J.R. Ryder. You know what I mean? Uh, Cameron, all that. Uh Pusha T don't hold no weight, Jim Jones also said. He's not pushing no shit out here. Well, you know, every time Pusha T dropped an album, he was moving some units and he was getting some critical acclaim. Jones also said that he puts Big Sean and Cameron over Pusha T. Um, you go in these clubs, I don't know no records they play in the club with Pusha T. That's very funny because the game also said that about Eminem. They don't play no Eminem in the clubs. I don't know why everybody's always taking it to the clubs with the records as if that's the too definitive nature of where music needs to be played in order to be heard. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't even go to the nightclub, you know, so uh, a lot of people are listening to the music from their computers. A lot of people are listening to the music in their cars. So let's not put the whole demographic of where you're the music is being played in the club if it's successful or not 
You know what I mean? The game was saying that stuff about Eminem's music not being played in the club when it's being played at sports venues during the World Series or during the Super Bowl. Like, come on, like, there's just so many bigger levels. And then that's not even true because hot damn, you know what I mean? These records were playing in clubs. Now, does Pusha T have music that's in the clubs now? No, not really. He doesn't. He makes music for the people that genuinely want to hear his tales. You know, it's not all about the club music. You know what I mean? Um, uh, what was the last Jim Jones record that played in the club? You know what I mean? What was the last... Uh, a, a lot of this stuff, we can't measure it by it being a club record. I don't really like that gauge. Because honestly, man, like I'm more into the impactful records that are going to, you know what I mean? I, how many times am I going to throw back Tony Yayo so seductive? You know what I'm saying? I love Live By The Gun, though. Just for a little bit of, but as far as these artists, Cameron being bigger than Pusha T, let's be realistic. Cameron was the owner of a record label. Cameron was the owner of a record label and he was already a solo artist. Pusha T came into the game as a member of a duo. So to compare Pusha T and Cameron, it's not really, I mean, obviously we're gonna give it to Cameron. Cameron came into the game as a solo artist. Big Sean, different as well. Big Sean came into the game, actually got signed by Kanye West, and actually got the opportunity to put out an album like this. He pretty much got the opportunity from Kanye West, and I think he sold like 90, some 97,000 copies first week on his first album. I might be wrong, but, uh, you know, I, I might be right. You know what I'm saying? I always have been looking at the numbers and living through it throughout the years. Just go back and do a little check on that because Big Sean always had an opportunity to release his solo material. I'm a big, big Sean fan. Now, Pusha T's entrance into the game was different. Like I said, he was a duo artist. It's much different. Jim Jones... You could almost compare it, the fact that he came to the game in a group and then he split off and got his solo deal. Um, so, let's get into the response, though. Because after saying all of this about Pusha T, it's like you just had to imagine a response was going to happen. So, Pusha T brought up, in the very one of the very first bars that I heard, he brought up, you run from the spirit of repossession. Too much enamel covers your necklace. I buy bitches. You buy them sections. You buy watches. I buy collections. Miseries fueling your aggression. Jealousy turns into obsession. Reality TV is mud wrestling. Some sign checks I know better than. So let's break down that lyric, man. You run from the spirit of repossession. Apparently, he's taking a dig at Jim Jones actually losing his house, losing his crib, or failing to pay the mortgage on his crib. He's taking a deep shot at Jim Jones, um, just like he did with Drake, exposing that Drake had a kid. You know what I mean? Sometimes there's a situation where you don't, want the world to know your personal information you are a gimmick you are you know an entertainer you don't want everybody in the world knowing every little bit of pe personal information some people uh, never want their children to be photographed by paparazzi they keep them out of that light you know what i mean other people just want their family completely just uh not involved with their music industry career. I can respect that. You know what I mean? I can 100% respect that. Um, but they say when you're a celebrity, you're a public figure. You know what I mean? You're open to whatever. And push a T, he digs down with some of these disses, man. Putting your business on front street. Hold up. You run from the spirit of repossession? Let me Google search that. Jim Jones, repossession. Then the whole story of the crib comes up, $1.2 million that they say he allegedly owes on the crib, and it's only worth $724,000 now. It's kind of a BS situation. I was actually just talking with a friend about something similar to this recently. Like, it would really suck if you ended up owing more on a property 
or one of your possessions than it was actually worth. How crazy does that sound? And this is what Pusha T does. He puts that shit right on front street. Too much enamel that covers your necklace. So now they're taking little digs at about the, the glassy nature of the necklace and the different things that they'll put on the necklace. Why are they putting all that enamel on the necklace? Oh, because that means it's less spots that you have to put diamonds on. Less spots that you gotta put diamonds on. So look, these shots are really digging deep from Pusha T. I believe this was the lyric. I could be wrong. I didn't really understand this one. He said, I buy bitches. You buy them sections. You, okay, I didn't really get that one too much. Anybody in the comments gets that one a little bit more than me. Um, you guys can jot down your thoughts as well. You buy watches. I buy collections. We always see Jones popping up with a new watch. Excuse me, excuse me, my joints at the, at the, you know what I mean, I'm getting my shit clean right now. But, um, so we always see Jim Jones and the guys buy watches, single watches. Pusha T is calling it out, you know what I mean? When he goes to the jeweler, he, you get the box of watches, he buys collections. You buying watches, I buy collections. Miseries fueling your aggression. Misery, I don't really take Jim Jones's life to be filled with misery. Every time I see Jim Jones, he's got a bottle of some Dom Perry, uh, not Dom Perry, uh, he's got a bottle of this bomb ass, this bomb ass Moet on deck. And shout out to you, Geechee Gotti. I still got this bottle for you. One of the best battle rappers mentioned me in this new battle. Salute Geechee Gotti. Yeah, we got a bottle for you over here, brother. But yeah, every time I see Jim Jones, he's always got a bottle and a blunt in his hand and he's always working because it's not all about this you guys but he's always working like right now him and dice peso are doing some amazing work so jim jones has just consistently worked it just so happens that right now he's hotter than he has been uh five years ago even but 10 years ago you know he his run was going on or you know 15 years ago but in more recent years, Jim Jones has got hot again between the lobby boys, between some of his artists actually starting to take off that he's representing. But then he said jealousy turns into obsession. Uh, maybe he's taking this back to Jay-Z. Maybe he's taking this back to the fact that maybe they're not in the position that Jay's in. He actually re-signed to Rock Nation. I guess that's under Jay-Z. Uh, jealousy turns into obsession. Um always thinking about wanting to be somebody you know what I mean uh, trying to get into a position that they're in and then never really doing it, it kind of goes back to the miseries fueling your aggression as well reality TV is mud wrestling um, Jim Jones made several comments about Pusha T we went over them and if Pusha T would have just responded back it would have kind of been like reality TV it would have been kind of like making a mockery out of what we love. That's why Pusha T probably didn't come back sooner. But he came back on a big stage, man. And he came back at uh, a time that was appropriate to him. I'm not going to call it the right time, but it's, it's made a headline. You know what I mean? So uh, he said, some checks, some signed checks I know better than. Goes right into the reality TV play. You know what I mean? A lot of people are going to get offered opportunities. They're going to take those opportunities rather than weighing out the pros and the cons of the situation, you know, uh, and really weighing out what could happen to their career in the long run by doing certain things like overexposing yourself based on television deals. I mean, if you're, if you're trying to say that about Jim Jones with some of the stuff that he's done with, uh, vh1 i think or whatever network was airing the love and hip-hop i mean i think jim jones turned love and hip-hop into his own reality show so he really flipped that you know what i mean and honestly a lot of these guys us as the fans we wish we got to see more of their career depicted on reality tv because we would have liked to have seen the way that jim jones was crafting all of his albums back in the day so if jim jones and mano were to do something like that in the future that would be dope. Uh, some uh, A show like Vice would have been able to cover that dope for the Lobby Boys. We'll have to see what type of network can step in and really put together this production. I mean, with BET coming back, 
full force and i also just mentioned vh1 any of these networks really need to jump on board with some of the old television formatting um so let's see um he said beware of my name that's their delegate you know i know where you're delicate crush you to pieces a hum a breath of it i will close your heaven for the hell of it you think it'd be valor amongst veterans i'm watching your fame escape relevance whoo this these lyrics are hard these lyrics are hard man he said we all in a room but here's the elephant you chasing a feature out of your element you're chasing a feature out of your element um you know jim jones chasing a jay-z feature maybe some people could look at it like that over the years that jim jones may have been jealous obsessed upset about the fact that he wasn't working with jay-z but if you look at the real factor of it jim jones just wasn't ready at that point in time you know what i mean jim jones wasn't ready at that point in time and because of the way that history played out it doesn't look like we will get the Jay-Z, Jim Jones feature in the proper light that it should have been done. Because of the way things have played out. What do you mean by that, Mikey T? I mean, Dipset didn't get the opportunity to play out like it should have. It didn't get the opportunity to be the group that it really should have been. Uh, the core four members, obviously that's what it was in the beginning, but it was also used as a propeller for the other dipset members like the uncasas the 40 cows all these guys to get a shot as well the offspring of, of dipset you know so jim jones didn't really get to experience the career that he should have and you know i do feel like he would have reached the point where he could have got a jay-z feature had he really experienced the career he should have that's not even to bring up his deal where i think it was sony when they had signed him, and I think Max and Stack would have been his artist at that point, and he would have just sold so many units that you would have had no choice. You would have legitimately had no choice but to give Jim Jones his respect. So let's see. He said, you know I know where you're delicate. You know I know where you're delicate. Um, where is he delicate? Where is he delicate? Maybe when it comes to actually putting together crushing bars like this, because the next lyric is crush you to pieces. I'll hum you a breath of it. I will close your heaven for the hell of it. The heaven. <clears throat> yeah, this is this is deep. Closing the heaven. Jim Jones made it out of a lifestyle of just living at his grandma's crib and having the boys over and eating what was ever in the fridge you know what i mean he made it out of that lifestyle to where he could have anything he wants at his beck and call and push a t is saying that he could end all of that he could ether jim jones existence just for the hell of it he could do it in a simple paragraph by exposing information to the public that we may have never known or may have never researched further to know. So yeah, um, I will close your heaven for the hell of it. That lyric right there is a butchering line, but can he really do it? Can Pusha T and Jim Jones? Jim Jones is not at the height of his career right now for, you know, push a T really even to be ending anything um the fame that Jim Jones has right now it's you know it's based on the work that he's putting in so every time Jim Jones goes out there and puts in some work it's being acknowledged by the true core fan base of whoever you know knows and watches his material but at certain points in time he'll go out it'll go outside of the box and his shit will go viral so Jim Jones really is at a point of his career where you can't end what he's doing right now because Jim Jones is just going, he's not so caught up with all the industry hype. Jim Jones isn't caught up with selling 500,000 units in a single week anymore. 
The industry isn't like that anymore. Jim Jones is just going out there and collecting bags as they come to him. And a real one's never going to stop doing that. So he really just can't end it. He comes with the next bar. You'd think it'd be Valor amongst veterans, which is a total flip from the previous bar because he's saying that he would end him, but now he's saying, oh, you think there would be Valor amongst us veterans. If we do a deep dive into the careers of both of these men, we could see when both of them got started, you know, and we could see how well their careers actually match up with one another.